making a crossover wire to connect two PCs uh, for Cisco Final, and uh, he's uh, subnetting uh, an IP address. I think it's important for students to use technology regularly because it's it's their world. It's what they are born into. It's what they will be using the rest of their life. Um, you know, I saw some some strange statistic where 85 percent of the jobs that our kindergartners are going to be doing. These jobs haven't even been, been created yet, and that's because of the advancement of technology and, and where we've come and where we're headed to. So I think it's tough to prepare students for a world in the future that we really don't know what, it, what it's going to look like. I'd like to see our teachers infusing technology more readily on a, on a more regular basis. And like I said earlier, I'd like to see them using technology in meaningful ways, ways uh, it, it, where it's embedded into our curriculum, um, places where students, teachers are using technology to teach concepts that students can't see on a chalkboard. I try to have technology in the classroom every day. I use it for notes, for activities. Uh, I show pictures on there, things that, you know, you can't do with a handout necessarily. Uh, for example, tomorrow I'll be playing an audio clip from Teddy Roosevelt from the 1912 election. Those are very rare. From these great bands, both of your old bodies have gained the side. Instead of instruments to promote the general welfare, they have become... I'm going to stop it. But the idea is most students have never heard Teddy Roosevelt's voice because it's a rare audio clip. But now with the computer, there's a whole college that's devoted to you know, preserving media archives and everything. Teddy Roosevelt's on there, so now students can hear what he sounds like, not only hear it, but they can hear his, his speech, a primary source, but in a, just a different way. Artists and musicians, for some reason, are two groups of people that have really embraced um, technology. One of the most ubiquitous applications for artists is Photoshop and Illustrator, and what Ms. Schwartz teaches students in high-tech art is, uh, is how to really use those programs to their, to their, their fullest potential. Well, the high-tech art program is over the course of four different semesters. They can be taken one after the other, or they can be taken um, spread apart from grades nine through 12. High-tech art one is the introductory program um, where we teach Photoshop and Illustrator. And um, Illustrator is a program where you can do different illustrations on the computer, so anything you can do in the art room, draw, paint, whatever you can do on the computer. Uh, we also have digital photography in the school, and a lot of students go on after school and continue to work with um, digital photography. It's just, it's a completely different thing than before with the dark room. Everything is all quick. You could take uh, you know, uh, tons of pictures in a short period of time, see them right away on the computer, and edit them. The digital photography program is something I'm really excited about. The, um, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really proud of the Board of Education and Dr. Harrington for really going out on a limb with uh, what, is a, what is a new technology. It's an interesting chain of events when uh, Nikon, the camera company, is only maintaining one line of film cameras, everything else is digital. Canon, the, uh, another major uh, camera company, is ceasing production of film cameras. Kodak, uh, you know, Kodak is a company that's synonymous with, um, with photography. Kodak is actually beginning to stop production of um, 8 and 16 millimeter movie film, as well as Kodachrome film uh, beginning, I believe, 2008. So when Kodak is making the decision not to make film anymore, it's really time for us to look for what the next the next avenue of photography is. Um, I have a great schedule as it allows me to work one-on-one -on -one with teachers. We do a lot of projects where the teacher will use the lab and they'll sign out the lab and I'll work with the teacher on a certain project, whether it's something that they want to learn a little bit more about technology-wise or it's something they just feel they need an extra pair of hands with. Students in many cases are more technologically savvy than some of our teachers and certainly some of our administrators. And I think as our teachers use a media that students are more comfortable with, it may increase students' interest, it may keep students more active, more involved. It'll certainly make things 
um, easier for students to turn in assignments, get some work done. Students will be more eager to stay on task if the technology is interesting to them. And if the technology is embedded in the coursework, then it just becomes second nature for teachers like it already is for students. And I think it, over time that will lead to improved achievement. I think we have some teachers that are not comfortable with technology. And I'd like to believe that I've made them more comfortable using technology. Um, they've even used it with their students. And I try to teach them to take advantage of their students' technology knowledge. Uh, well, Ms. Walter is a huge help for me you know, whenever I need new programs or something to look at. Uh, you know, just being in a department, too, is important also. Dealing with my, some of my colleagues, Ms. LaRusso and I teach some of the same classes, so we're able to talk back and forth about lessons she's done in the past, uh, some things that I've done with it also. Often with technology, you run into problems. Um, it's rare that, something, that everybody will get something right away without difficulty. Some students are stronger with it and are great with problem solving and then can help each other with the task. Also some projects that are involved with technology are usually very elaborate and so if students can work together on them that will encourage them to be collaborative and they're more likely to get more done and out of it if they're talking with each other. Uh, eSchool Data we just initiated this year. We transferred everything from our old into our new student management system and it's been really great. With the new management system teachers can log on themselves and look up their own information. They don't have to go through uh, another person to just ask for a report and they can look up student phone numbers, grades, attendance. It pretty much automates everything. Well, first of all, eSchool is phenomenal. It's just a click of a button and uh, you take attendance, absenteeism, you have all the information you need regarding numbers, addresses. It's, it's all right there. When we created the master schedule last, it was done in schoolware. Um, the counselors use eSchool when we transfer it over to add, to drop, um, to look at the transcripts, uh, to look at report cards, to look at progress reports. So it's our information link to student performance. As we all know, technology is something that um, is, is constantly changing. And with the added, with new computers and, and, and new software, students are getting um, first-hand experience on the most modern and up-to-date technology. I love working with the smart board. We have had um, professional development on the smart board. Uh, we use the smart board in the classroom which allows me to project images onto a special board and the kids can interact with the board and it's, it's a lot better than a chalkboard. Yes, yes. I think it's really cool. It's, fun. You can, you it's can really interact. interactive yeah. and you can draw on it. I think the smart boards are a great, great tool to use um, in any grade level. Um, but in the K through two uh, grade levels, I think smart boards are um, excellent. Um, they get the students interested um, because it's up on a large screen. Um, it's very good for the visual learner to see and have things modeled before they go off and do it themselves on the computer. And it gets um, students very excited to interact um, and come up to do things on the board themselves. So it's a great tool for different types of learners and it's a great tool to get students really excited about what we're going to do. We have laptops in the classroom where the uh, students can use in cooperative learning and working pairs. We have um, six smart boards in the building that can be moved from classroom to classroom, digital cameras, so there is a wide variety of tools that the teachers and students can use.